Does tithing have a place in Christian giving today? I'm Tim Greenwood, and this is Windows on the Word. In part one, we saw what Jesus taught and practiced throughout his entire life here on earth concerning tithing and giving. However, because the New Covenant technically didn't begin until after Jesus rose from the dead, there are some who might argue that it didn't matter what Jesus taught and practiced on this topic of tithing. That doesn't make sense to me, but that's what some people say. So now let's look at Paul's New Covenant references to tithing. Paul, you know, New Covenant Paul, had a lot to say about giving in the New Covenant. Here, Paul wrote what I call the ultimate partner letter. Now, I actually paraphrased this teaching with my inserted comments for one of our partner letters, and Marcia begged me not to use it because she knew that it would, it would be offensive to people. Now, I won't take time here to read my modern paraphrase of that with my comments, but I do want to read what Paul the Apostle actually had to say right from the Bible. It's found in 1 Corinthians 9, 1 through 16. And all of these scriptures are unchanged from the NIV version. The Apostle Paul said, this is starting in 1 Corinthians 9, 1, Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you, the Corinthian church, not the result of my work in the Lord? Verse 2. Even though I may not be an apostle to others, I sure am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. Verse 3, this is my defense to those who sit in judgment on me. Verse 4, don't we, Paul and Barnabas, have the right to food and drink? Verse 5, don't we have the right to take a believing wife along with us as do the other apostles and the Lord's brother and, and Peter? Verse 6. Or is it just me and Barnabas that have to work for a living? Verse 7. Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and doesn't eat some of the grapes? Who tends a flock and doesn't drink some of the milk? Verse 8. Do I say this merely from a human point of view? Doesn't the law say the same thing? Now note that Paul uses the Old Covenant as an illustration for financial support of the ministry. Now I mention this because some people mistakenly believe that everything Moses gave as part of the law is no longer even relevant to the New Covenant Christian. Now I want you to note that the Corinthian church was part of Paul's ministry and that Paul was not a pastor of a church. Okay, so now continuing in verse 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, Do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Is it about the oxen that God was concerned? Verse 10. Surely he says this for our benefit. Yes, it was written for us because when the plowman plows and the thresher threshes, they ought to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. Verse 11. If we have sown spiritual seeds among you, is it too much to believe that we should reap in the material harvest from you? Verse 12. If others have this right of support from you, shouldn't we have it all the more? But we didn't use this right. On the contrary, we put up with anything rather than hinder the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now note also that Paul states that he, his ministry, has the right to expect to be financially supported by those that he ministers to. Now next, Paul uses the Old Covenant Levitical priesthood as an illustration for financial support of the ministry. Now, this is the Levitical priesthood which received the tithe. Now, I mention this because nearly all of those anti-tithing teachers state 
that the Levitical system has no relevance to the New Covenant Christian today. Now remember, Paul is talking about financial support here. Verse 13, don't you know that those that work in the temple get their food from the temple? And those that serve at the altar share in what is offered on the altar? Now in verse 14, it says, In the same way the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. So I have a question for you. How was food provided to those who worked in the temple? Well, the answer is the tithe and the offerings. Paul says that in the same way, those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. Which same way? It has to be tithes and offerings. Continuing in verse 15. Now, I've not used any of these rights, and I'm not writing this in some hope that you'll do these things for me. But rather, I'd die rather than have anybody deprive me of this opportunity to boast. Verse 16, Yet, when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, for I'm compelled to preach. Woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. Now, Paul here is saying that he was willing to starve to death before he'd beg or force people to support his ministry. But support it or not, that he'd continue preaching anyway, with them or without them. Wow, if I were to send out a partner letter that said exactly what you just read, I think many would be offended, if not outraged. Now, did Paul here have the right to require financial support from the church or not? He said that it was the Lord who arranged, ordained, and commanded it. How much was the church to provide? Well, if you look up 1 Corinthians 9, 13 through 14 in the Greek, you'll see that the Lord arranged for and prescribed the same amount that those that worked in the temple, the Levites, were provided. And the Levites were provided the tenth, or 10% of all increase or income of each household. Now, Paul was an apostle used by God to establish and develop churches. But according to Ephesians 4, 11 through 12, also written by Paul, the Lord gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying or building up of the body of Jesus Christ. Now, note that Paul was not a pastor. He was an apostle, the head of his own ministry. The apostle was just one part of the five-fold ministry, all five of which need to be supported in that same way. The Greek says that in this same way means in this same manner. Likewise, all referring to what was previously said. In other words, tithes and offerings. Now, in part three, we're going to explore what the author of Hebrews, who I believe was also Paul, had to say about Abraham, Melchizedek, and the tithe. Hey, thanks for joining us for this video. We can stay connected if you subscribe. You can be notified when the next Windows on the Word video is released. So just click on the subscribe link, click on the like button, and click on the notify bell here on the screen. And please, share this video with others.